Welcome to the Web Content Management Primer for IBM WebSphere Portal. This presentation provides an introduction to web content management within the context of your portal. This session will provide you with a foundation of basic knowledge and understanding about the features and functions of IBM WebSphere Portal from a content author and site area owner's perspective. This foundation will serve as a springboard for custom training in the portal web pages and portlets that have been created for your use. The session topics include an overview of portal. We'll seek to define portal as a term and look at examples of portals on the internet. An overview of web content management. We'll explore the concept of web content management within an IBM WebSphere portal. An exploration of web content management details. We'll review the common terms and uses of the authoring portlet that staff will use to publish content. We'll begin with an overview of Portal. In a nutshell, portals provide a single point of access to aggregated information. A portal is a website that provides one or more functions through a unified website gateway. This can include information and application programs. Internet portals function as a point of access to information and applications on the World Wide Web. You'll see examples of Internet portals within sites such as iGoogle, MyTimes, and MyYahoo. Within an organization, a portal can be made available through an intranet or an extranet, or both. An intranet is a web-based network that exists within an organization's local area network, also known as a LAN, or a wide area network, also known as a WAN. An extranet provides a means of sharing an organization's content via the World Wide Web. Portal access can be password protected to ensure security and safeguard proprietary information. Portals provide a way to display information that can be gathered from diverse sources and displayed within systematically unified presentations. Portals provide a platform for the intelligent integration of enterprise content and documents, applications, software programs, and workflow processes. Portals can help improve communication and collaboration among customers, partners, and employees. In this case, the TFANet portal will facilitate communication and collaboration among institute attendees, core members, alumni, and staff members. Portal's toolset for maintaining a site's uniform look and feel helps to provide portal users with a sense of site-wide consistency and improved navigation. Portals provide a means of aggregating or grouping together multiple applications within the context of a single website, allowing the site users to gain access to task-appropriate resources and tools. These aggregated applications or programs can exist within Portal's own system. Likewise, these applications can exist on other systems that reside outside of the Portal's own system infrastructure. A web portal is typically composed of multiple pages. Each page may contain one or more portlets. A portlet is an individual application or content unit that can be placed on a page. Portlets can be published on a page individually or within a logical grouping of related portlets. Here is an example of multiple portlets on a page. Notice that there are multiple newsfeed portlets published on the iGoogle technology page. Each one displays information from a different source. Portal users fall within three general categories. Technical administrators, content administrators, and end users. Technical administrators control the organization structure and availability of portal content and applications. Think of technical administrators as builders who fabricate a house, providing the roof, floors, walls, and rooms. Content administrators maintain and control the details of portal content, including the text, images, and media files that are presented and published for the end users. Think of content administrators as movers who pack and unpack information to furnish a house. End users are the portal's primary audience. End users are provided access to all of the applications and content that the portal technical administrators and the business content administrators have made available for their use. 
the community of end users can be broken down into specialized user groups. This allows for targeting content and fine-tuning applications for their specific activities and needs. Web portals can be published for general public access, available to everyone with a web browser that has access to the Internet. Web portals can be published for defined user group access through intranets and through extranets, as is the case with this portal. In this section, you've learned the definition of a web portal and looked at examples of Internet portals. A portal is a website that provides one or more functions through a unified website gateway. Portals provide a single point of access to aggregated information. You have learned the features and benefits, as well as the structural elements and capabilities, of a web portal. Portals provide a way to display information that can be gathered from diverse sources and displayed within systematically unified presentations. Portals can help improve communication and collaboration among customers, partners, and employees. You've learned the three common categories of users, technical administrator, content administrator, and end user. The following section will provide an overview of web content management concepts and terms. Web content management is sometimes referred to by its acronym, WCM, that is pronounced as WICM. Web content management systems divide content and display into two separate domains. Details of these different perspectives are stored within one of two repositories. One, the content repository, and two, the presentation repository. Content is entered into the content repository by using the authoring portlet. The content repository holds the essential aspects of content information such as text, illustrations, photographs, and multimedia files. Content is stored as a content item. Content items are defined by a specific content item structure. Each instance of Wickham information that might ultimately be displayed within a portlet's presentation is called a content item. Content items are typically composed of multiple attributes or fields of information. Some attributes are what we term as system attributes. These include information such as the content author, the date the item was created, and the date that it is to be published, to name only a few. The remaining attributes comprise the information that has business meaning, information that is likely to retain its meaning outside of the system. The presentation repository holds the definitions of portlets. These definitions are the detailed specifications of various display parameters and rules that are applied to content. The display parameters determine just what will be displayed for a given content item and how it will be displayed. Think of a portlet as a type of semi-transparent wrapper for content. It exposes only the information needed from a content item. In web content management, separating content from its end presentation is like the separation of core ingredients for a cake before baking from the cake itself after it has been baked and frosted. Let's review the following analogy. The content repository contains a variety of content and content data types, text, images, media files. Think of content as ingredients for a cake batter. Add all the ingredients together in a mixing bowl and then pour the contents into whatever shape or form you desire for presentation. Layer cake, sheet cake, cupcakes, or bunt cake. In portal, a variety of display layouts and compositions of different sizes and shapes can accommodate the same content. Content is simply content. No matter what details exist about a content item, be it the title, a headline, or a description, this information is defined, structured, and stored separately from and independently of the definition of its display. Presentation is tailored for use. By this we mean that the layout and presentation schemes that are used to present content can be custom fit to the specific needs of end users as well as the specific needs of the content material. If content needs to be displayed within a narrow portlet, taking up only a slice of the browser window, the default display can be preset for a slim vertical presentation. 
Likewise, if the content material is best suited to being presented within the context of a wide portlet, the default display can be preset for that purpose. Content conforms to the portlet display configuration, and this determines how content will be shown to the end user. Portals display content in whatever form is necessary for the occasion. Likewise, display of the same content can be customized to specific needs. In this section, you've learned about the separation of content for presentation, that there is a content repository and a presentation repository. You have learned that content items are the building blocks of the content repository. You have learned that content is independent of presentation and that a content item can be displayed within one or more presentation layouts, each with its own unique characteristics. Next, we'll examine some of the details of content management for WebSphere Portal. In this section, we'll discuss the following details about WebSphere Portal components. Authoring Portlet, Portal Component Structures, Portal Concepts and Terms. Content administrators should be aware of terms and concepts presented in this section in order to effectively manage content within the authoring portlet. This section will provide brief explanations of these concepts and terms, as well as portal structural paradigm. WebSphere Portal's authoring portlet is the standard component that content administrators use to publish content. The authoring portlet is made available for content administrators within the context of the portal administration toolset. Only individuals within the Content Administrator User Group will have access to the authoring portlet. It is not made available for access to the End User Group. Elements. Elements either store web content or generate web content. Elements do not exist as freestanding items. You store elements in container items. Container items. Container items can be thought of as files or documents that are used to store web content, metadata, that is information about the web content, and access control information, or rights and privileges to view and maintain content. There are four different container item types, site, site area, content item, and component. Sites, site areas, and content items represent different sections of a site framework. You can store more than one content element in a site, a site area, and a content item. Again, elements either store web content or generate web content. Components store a single element type. Template items. When creating a new content item, an authoring template must first be selected. There are two types of template items, authoring template and presentation template. Authoring templates define which data fields are visible on a content item form, as well as the default values for each setting and field on a content item form. The portal technical administrator creates the authoring templates. A presentation template defines the layout of elements and components that are displayed on a web page, as well as the default properties of a web page. The portal technical administrator creates the presentation templates. A WebSphere portal site can have multiple site areas. The template map records the association of authoring templates with their constituent presentation templates. Content items are published to site areas through their direct relationship with the authoring template. The portal technical administrator defines and maintains the template maps. When a content item is rendered, or displayed within a browser, the presentation template that is used to display the content item is determined by the current template map. A template map is defined in a site or site area and consists of a pairing of an authoring template with a presentation template. Site Framework A site framework is a concept that is similar to the site map of a traditional website. 
whereas a sitemap is based on a directory structure or the links between pages on a website. A site framework consists of a set of web content management items. Each site framework consists of a single site under which a set of site areas and content items are grouped. Workflow items. Workflows, workflow stages, and workflow actions. You use workflows to control the access to, verification, and eventual approval of web content management items. When creating a workflow, you select a set of workflow stages. This diagram shows a portal workflow within the context of a swim lane diagram. Each lane represents a stage within the content publishing lifecycle. When creating a workflow, you select a set of workflow stages. Workflow actions are executed upon entering or exiting a workflow stage. Profile items. Taxonomies and categories are profile items. Profile items constitute metadata or information about content that extends beyond the content itself. Taxonomies define hierarchies or groupings of information within a unified perspective or domain of knowledge. In Webster Portal, categories are grouped within taxonomies. You use categories to profile or describe certain item types, such as content items. A category refers to and it describes the subject matter of your content. In this section, you have learned the following key concepts. Authoring portlet, web portal parts, elements, container items, there are four types, site, site area, content item, and component. You have learned about WebSphere Portal Parts, Authoring Template, Presentation Template, and Template Map. You have learned about Site Framework and Workflows. Finally, you have also learned about Taxonomies and Categories. In total, this presentation has provided the following information. First, a portal overview. We defined a web portal. We looked at examples of portals on the Internet. Next, web content management overview. We explored the concept of web content management within a WebSphere portal. Finally, web content management details. We explored the common terms and uses of the authoring portlet that staff will use to publish content.